I was originally scheduled to present back in December, long before you voted on the Public Works Plan, but management bumped me to tonight. This rescheduling means you've had to make a decision before having all the facts, which I hope you find disconcerting. Parsnip misinformation is rampant and being used to make terrible decisions, so I want to present to you 10 lessons we've learned, 10 facts from our adopter road experiences in the ditches of Lanark County. Let's start with the good news. Adopt Road is a successful program. We know this is true because we've controlled parsnip on our roadsides without chemicals as planned. And because Lanark County Public Works is happy with our outcomes. They've even thanked us, but it does feel strange to be thanked for something we've been forced to do. The risk of spraying is clearly greater than the risk of parsnip. So when the past council removed the no spray signs and replaced them with Adopt a Road, we had no choice but to accept. The second lesson we've learned is not to fear parsnip. We do respect the plant, and we know how to avoid getting burned, and it's really not that hard. We dress appropriately, and we keep water handy to wash off any sap. And we've had zero burns over, over two years when this simple protocol was followed. This should work just as well for public workers or first responders in the ditches or residents encountering parsnip anywhere. The third lesson is that not everything hates parsnip. Pollinators love parsnip flowers, and our beekeepers have confirmed this. Another insect that loves parsnip is the parsnip webworm, which eats the flowers and seeds. We've seen it here in our ditches, and we look forward to it and other biologic controls balancing parsnip naturally, much as weevils and beetles have successfully balanced purple loosestrife. This will take many years, but longer if we use poison. Now, despite what you may have heard, the war on parsnip is not being fought because of any serious risk to human health. This was confirmed by Dr. Paula Stewart, our Medical Officer of Health. She told Lanark Highlands Council last spring that we're really doing it for farmers who don't want parsnip in their crops. Now that's completely understandable, so why aren't we focusing on helping these people and leaving the rest of us alone? The lack of a parsnip health risk was one factor that led Lanark Highlands Council to vote not to join the county spray program last year. But that's not the only reason they rejected spraying. So now let's consider some bad news. If the plan for Adopt a Road was to have us eradicate the parsnip on our stretches of road, we failed, and we can never succeed. We have controlled this year's parsnip on our roadsides, but there's a lot more growing just over the fence line, and the seed bank is huge. The truth is there's now vastly more parsnip on adjacent private property than there is on our adopted roadsides. This plant is here to stay. So if any public works department has to undertake this control activity, knowing it's a futile and endless task, let's make sure we're using techniques that work and don't make things worse. The best way to guarantee a parsnip won't go to seed is to simply pull it out of the ground. This is the technique we've used to achieve our best outcomes, and it only needs doing once per plant. We've also tried clipping. This takes less effort but greater frequency as the clipped plant will continue to reflower until it runs out of time or energy and dies. We haven't used mowing on our roadsides, but other adopter road groups have with success. And of course, Public Works does a lot of mowing. It needs to be done before the plants have gone to seed and the equipment needs to be carefully cleaned, but it can be done right up to the edge of farmers' fields. The most problematic control method is chemical spraying. Seeds can re remain viable for many years on the ground and are not affected by spraying. But many pesticides, including Dow's Clearview, come with the recommendation that they be used only for two years in a row to avoid building resistance in the plants. Then you need to swap out different classes of increasingly deadly chemicals to fight this battle, which becomes increasingly difficult. Some of the biggest and healthiest parsnips we've seen can be found along regularly sprayed stretches of highways 511 and 7. And we know from the experience of other counties that this battle never ends. This area had been sprayed for seven years when this photo was taken. Mississippi Mills, this is the future you voted for last night. Not only does spraying not work, we've also learned a lot in the past two years about the huge health risk we take when we spray. 2019 will be the fifth year Lanark County has sprayed Clearview, far more than Dow's recommended two years. Clearview is an untested chemical mixture of the active ingredients aminopyrrolid and metsulfuron methyl. These are combined before application with a known cancer-causing adjuvant called Gateway to present an even more toxic poison that has also never been tested, not by Dow and certainly not by Health Canada. 
Lindsay Hansen of Health Canada told Council last year they don't test anything, not the active ingredients or the mixtures such as Clearview. Active ingredients are tested by the manufacturers, who submit their findings on paper to the PMRA, who then regulate these ingredients. They're very careful to say they don't approve pesticides because that would make them liable for the outcomes. What does that tell you? We know that this is a flawed and inadequate system. In 2016, the Auditor General, Michael Ferguson, stated that the agency fails to fulfill its objective of preventing unacceptable risks to Canadians and the environment from the unsafe use of pesticides. And it's still failing. When we ask Health Canada for proof of safety, they deflect and say there's no evidence of harm. But they're not looking for the harm. They're just waiting for it to show up in us. Now, to illustrate just how bad this system is, imagine if I told you that charcoal, saltpeter, and sulfur were all individually safe and approved as active ingredients, and then told you it was probably okay to mix them together and sit on a keg of the stuff while smoking a cigarette because there's no documented evidence that the individual ingredients cause harm. You might question my opinion that this mixture is therefore probably safe. We're supposed to have faith. I don't have faith in this. Do you? Many of us would rather take our chances with a vegetable than with an industry driven by a business model that counts on everyone crossing their fingers, especially an industry repeatedly found to have lied about safety to get their products onto the market. So we need a strategy, because unlike parsnip sap, you can't wash off an ingested carcinogen, and our health is at stake. Lanark County has a vegetation management plan, but there is no strategy driving its application. Read it and you'll see that it offers lists of what can be done, but no direction at all on what should be done. So last year, we asked Council to make a strategic statement directing Public Works to use chemicals only as a last resort. That Council refused and told Public Works to apply the Vegetation Management Plan using their best judgment. This, of course, involves faith in the system, which I don't have. So I met with Public Works in the fall of 2017, and I asked them to extend their Adopt-A-Road program specifically to protect our sensitive wetlands from toxic chemicals. I called it Adopt-A-Bridge. They said they'd consider it. And then this past spring, they chose instead to replace mechanical weed trimming of guardrails with poisoning, and sprayed 45 kilometers of wetland guardrails with glyphosate, and during turtle nesting season to boot. Glyphosate is toxic to aquatic animals, but they said the work was done according to the label and everything would be fine. Well, maybe not. Lanark County Public Works, Health Canada, and farmers and their families all over the world have had faith in this flawed system, and we now know for a fact that it's blind faith. They believed Monsanto's and Dow's and the other manufacturers' claims that their poisons were safe, despite ample evidence that they're not. Safe poison is an oxymoron. Cancer and neurological disorders are real, and the number of sufferers is growing, especially in rural areas and farming communities like Lanark County. That's the truth. And now, even with the release of the Monsanto papers, we see Health Canada clinging to the same inadequate review process. I've spoken with the lawyers who caught Monsanto in their lies. I've read the damning emails. So I wasn't impressed when Health Canada announced in January that Monsanto's old data still says glyphosate is safe, and that's good enough for them. And I'm disgusted that Health Canada still allows glyphosate to be used, even as we find poison in our children's Cheerios. This has got to stop. So, four years of spraying is enough. We need fresh thinking that doesn't include the wholesale spraying of untested chemical poisons. We need to deploy scarce resources where they will do the most good without putting our health at risk. The 2019 Vegetation Management Plan already recognizes the need to reduce pesticide use, and it gives Public Works the staff and budget to eliminate spraying completely, today. So we're asking you, tonight, to recognize our concerns with spraying and accept the impossibility of parsnip eradication and to direct Public Works to reduce their planned spraying in favor of increased manual methods, and to limit chemical treatments exclusively to lands adjacent to farms that have specifically requested spraying. This way, you can leave the rest of the parsnip, the pollinators, and the people of Lanark County to find a natural balance over time and demonstrate to residents that our health and our environment are your greater priorities. That's what our grandchildren expect of us. Thank you.